Hello everyone. First of all, let me say that I'm sorry that I disappeared for such a long time. Um, I'm back making this video. I hope that I will be around uh, and available to make many more. I won't bore you with the details of why I didn't do any videos last season, <clears throat> but uh, hopefully I'll be able to make some this season. But for this video, what I want to do is talk about Marc-Andre Fleury. Now, Marc-Andre Fleury uh, is on a Blackhawks team that, let's face it, I know we're only a handful of games into the season, but unless there's a pretty dramatic turn of events, they're not making the postseason. Now, when Marc-Andre Fleury was first traded to the Blackhawks, he publicly kicked around the idea that he may retire instead of playing for the Blackhawks. So there is a uh, reason to believe that this could be Marc-Andre Fleury's last year, regardless of what happens. Uh, but if it is his last year, or even if it isn't, he's going to want to have one last run at the cup. And if you look at his last few years, there's reason to believe that he still has it within him to be a high quality starting caliber goaltender that a team could benefit from having. And let's face it, it's not going to be the Blackhawks. So does Marc-Andre Fleury finish the season with Chicago? I would venture a guess that the answer to that question is no. But if he doesn't finish with Chicago, then where does he go? The trade de deadline this year is March 21st, and the likelihood is that Marc-Andre Fleury, if he's going to get dealt, is going to get dealt uh, on or around the trade deadline. And what I foresee happening, and let's face it, if you follow sports regularly, you've seen this in uh, many on many occasions, that he is likely to get traded to a team that is in playoff contention, but either is having suspect goaltending or their starting goaltender has been injured and now they're down to a backup that they may or may not have a lot of faith in. Marc-Andre Fleury, provided that he can get back to the form that he was in in the last few years, which again, playing on a playoff caliber team, I believe he can, would be a better option for many teams than their current backup goaltender provides for them. So let's take a look at a few teams that could fit that bill. The first one that I'm going to throw out uh, I, I can't even believe I'm saying it, but Buffalo. Yes, Buffalo looks actually um, potentially good this year. Now, we've seen in years past where Buffalo has started out the season strong and then fallen apart. And there's there's no, uh, nobody's going to, I think, mock you or laugh at you if you suggest that this could be another year of them doing exactly the same thing. So maybe by March 21st, Buffalo's a non-issue. But let's pretend for a moment that they're able to maintain uh, what they're doing so far, okay? If that's the case, and if we were pushing toward March 21st and Anderson were injured, that would leave them with Tokarski. Now, Anderson has, has won four out of Buffalo's five wins. I don't know that Buffalo is going to feel comfortable with their backup situation, and so that would be a potential option should Buffalo still be in contention uh, when the when the trade deadline rolls around. What about Calgary? Markstrom is playing well. Markstrom is a, a very good goalie, although we don't have, he doesn't have a, a huge long track record, but let's just say that he continues to play well throughout the year and then finds himself on some sort of a long-term uh, injury situation. Vlader, only seven career games in the NHL. Calgary is not going to be able to go into the playoffs uh, in that situation. So they're going to be on the hunt for a goaltender at trade deadline should there be an injury to Markstrom. Now, again, keep in mind, I'm saying should there be. It's possible none of these teams will face a long-term injury to their starting goaltender. But if they do, especially an injury that looks like it would push into the playoffs, then they're going to be looking to make a move. What about Colorado? Now, Colorado is a fascinating one to me. In fact, as I was thinking about Colorado, I was thinking this could be a very viable option for Marc-Andre Fleury to be traded to, whether they have an injury to their goaltending or not. So let's talk about their goaltending. Darcy Kemper has 
played most of their games this year, and he's been, mm, I, I mean, I hate to use the word pedestrian, but I think it's about right, with a 3.19 goals against and an 8.93 save percentage, his record is 3-3. Three and three. Now, I will admit, early in, in the season, they were without McKinnon. You know, they had some key injuries that certainly caused them to not be as good of a team, and anytime the team suffers, the goaltending is going to suffer with it, or at least usually. So is Darcy Kemper their long-term solution? Well, there are two possibilities. One, the answer is no, he's not. Let's say that throughout the season, he proves to just be an okay goaltender and they feel like they need something more. Or two, let's say that he gets an injury. Now, if you look at their backup situation, you have Johansson and Francois, who's injured, but his injury is only supposed to last a few weeks. He's supposed to be back, um, you know, still yet this year. So let's say Francois comes back and he is um, as good as he was prior to his injury. Do the Colorado Avalanche feel comfortable with a kemper Francois combination? And what if one of those two gets injured? Do they feel comfortable with Johansson? Uh, Francois, 36 career games. Now, he is he has been good in those 36 career games. Johansson, 22 career games. If I'm Colorado, I do have to be wondering, do I currently have in place the goaltending, not for the future, right? Francois probably is the goalie of their future, but do I have in place the goaltending that would take me on a deep run in the playoffs this year? Because let's face it, they have the team, right? I mean, they have the team built to win a Stanley Cup, but you know, going from Grubauer to Darcy Kemper, one could argue is a step down, maybe through no fault of their own, but nonetheless a step down. And if Kemper can't keep up or if he were to be injured, could you rely on a young goaltender like Francois just for this year? Or would you make a move for somebody like Marc-Andre Fleury that you you might, you know, proverbially, proverbially speaking, catch lightning in a bottle and um, and be able to capture that 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 one more Stanley Cup. What about Florida? If Bobrovsky got injured, you had Spencer Knight. Now Spencer Knight looks promising for the future, um, but six career games so far. Now in that six career games, a 2.21 goals against and a 9.21 save percentage. Those are good numbers. Of course, he's playing on a good team. But those are good numbers. Maybe Florida, if Bobrovsky were injured, could run with Spencer Knight. But if there is that dangling carrot out there of somebody like a Marc-Andre Fleury, do you make that move? Minnesota. Um, Cam Talbot has played all but one of their games this year. Would they rely on uh, Kakinen, who has only played 30 career games? I, I don't know. He's He's good, right? But again, if you have a team that looks like they could make a deep run into the cup finals or toward the cup finals, deep run into the playoffs, and your starting goaltender gets injured, do you want to rely on a guy who has only, you know, 30 games played in the NHL? And by the by that point of the season, maybe he's got 35 or 37, but still very few games in the grand scheme of things, especially when you compare him to somebody like a Marc-Andre Fleury. Other teams that have a situation where they're going to rely heavily on one goaltender and would have to question how much can we trust our inexperienced or suspect backup should our starting goaltender be injured when the trade deadline rolls around, especially again if that injury looks long term. Philadelphia, San Jose, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is an interesting one. Brian Elliott is a fantastic goaltender and he's proven himself many times over. But if Vasilevsky were injured and you had to rely on Brian Elliott to take you deep into the playoffs, if you could make a trade for Marc-Andre Fleury, would you prefer to do that? Uh, Winnipeg would be another one where if Hellebuck goes down, mm, that's, that's going to be rough for them. Washington, uh, two kind of inexperienced goaltenders. And St. Louis, uh, the Blues are relying, are, are looking very promisingly at Vili Husso, uh, but he has very little experience in the NHL. If Bennington got hurt, would the Blues make a move? And then there's one more that I want to throw out that to me is the most intriguing possibility, uh, possibility of all. And that would be a team that has uh, a lot of quality, a team that has every realistic possibility of not only making the playoffs, but going deep into the playoffs. Uh, but they have a, a very good starting goaltender and a very inexperienced backup. 
What would happen if Tristan Jari were to become injured with the Pittsburgh Penguins? If Tristan Jari got injured and it were going and if it, if it was going to be a long-term injury that would go into the playoffs, Pittsburgh would need to make a move. Their backup goaltender has 72 career games. He's probably not the answer for a deep playoff run this year. Wouldn't it be a fascinating situation if Pittsburgh needed a goaltender come trade deadline time? Be it because of injury or maybe Jari is just playing okay and, and they're concerned that he may not be the answer for this year anyway. Wouldn't it be a fascinating situation if the Penguins were able to reobtain Marc-Andre Fleury and make a cup run with him and then he were to retire? What a storybook ending that would be to Marc-Andre Fleury's career should he retire at the end of this year. Now, a few weeks ago, right before the season started, or actually I think it was like one game into the season, as I was thinking about this, I thought Montreal would be a fascinating possibility. With Carey Price out for we don't know how long, um, and, and you know, Jake Allen has proven himself to be good at times and absolutely awful at times, and you never know what Jake Allen you're going to get. I thought, what if it turned out that Carey Price was going to be out for an extended period of time and the Canadians reached out to get Marc-Andre Fleury, maybe even earlier in the season, in order to um, keep them on a playoff trajectory throughout the season. Unfortunately, as the season has played out so far, I don't think that's a very realistic possibility. Uh, Montreal's looking uh, pretty rough. However, it is still early enough in the season that they could do something. Um, who knows? You know, they could try to make a big move in order to salvage this season. I just don't know if they would or not. And um, let's face it, right now, it looks like goaltending would be the number one place that you'd want to go if you were trying to fix that team. Uh, but for me, I think the most fascinating possibility would be Pittsburgh. However, all of the teams that I named are realistic uh, realistic landing spots, especially around the trade deadline, if they have a goaltending injury, a long-term injury to their starting goaltender. But maybe I left off a team that you think would fit the bill well. Maybe you think Flurry's going to finish the season with Chicago. Let me know what you think. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Do please click like if you found this in, uh, video informational, entertaining, or useful. Please subscribe if you have not already. And uh, I appreciate you watching, especially after my long hiatus. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Bye now.